so now guys you tell me that let's say if i ask you a very simple question if i ask you a very simple question that print the first 200 natural numbers print the first 200 natural numbers if i ask you this question with your current understanding of programming with your current understanding of the lectures of whatever i have taught what is the best you can do you can do c out 1 2 3 and even if you have to put space then we'll put a space in between two then put a space then three and then so on and so forth you will manually be printing right you'll be manually printing everything that's the best that you have to do right but don't you think it's going to be a bit hard to print 200 numbers manually and let's say after some time i ask you to print the first 20000 natural numbers it's going to be even more difficult and extremely difficult but we are going to be software engineers right we not only just solve difficult problems but we solve difficult problems in an efficient way right so just think about it just think about it what exactly are we doing here we are starting we are going to start the program right then let's say we are going to create a variable let's say num and set a value 1 inside num okay and then let's say we are going to print num we are going to print num okay now the, what the next thing is going to happen what the next thing is going to happen you have printed one now you need to print two right so what will you do you are going to increment the value of num so you will say number plus equals to one and then you are going to print again and you can say this is a processing box so let's keep it a square okay so you are going to do print num again now because num has been incremented by one so one plus one becomes two you are going to print two and then so on and so forth you are going to repeat this process right now if you carefully see there is an element of repetition there is an element of repetition element of repetition what is the element of repetition if you carefully look at it if you carefully look at it then you are just assigning some value to the variable number and just then just printing the number then assigning some value like plus equal to is also an assignment operator right so you are assigning a value again and then printing it again then you will assign it again and then print it again assign it again print it again so aren't we repeating things aren't we just repeating everything right how about if this flow of control if let's say this is the flow of control right this is the flow of control this is the flow of control how about instead of this this flow of control redirect itself like this how about this now just think about what i am trying to say you are going to do num is equals to 1 you are going to print 1 then you are going to increment num now num becomes 2 right and then from here you are going to go back here and say print num so print 2 one second print 2 then after you have printed 2 you go back here num plus equals to 1 you make num 3 and then you go back here print 3 then you after printing 3 you go back here again num plus equals to 1 3 plus 1 is 4 once 3 plus 1 is 4, you are going to go back here and print 3. Sorry, print 4. And so on and so forth. Can I say that? And so on and so forth, we can say that. So instead of like, instead of having these set of 
instructions again and again again and again we saw that there is an element of repetition in the instructions every instruction is somehow similar to the previous instruction in some way and there is a repetition going on we can avoid this repetition by maybe just branching our code like this this concept is called as loops what are loops in programming loops are a simple tool using which you can repeat a process if at any point of time you get a process where there is an element of repetition see previously we had conditionals conditionals were a tool to make decisions similarly we have loops loops are a tool to repeat something if there is an element of repetition just put it inside a loop as simple as that if at any point of time you feel that you are doing extra amount of work and this could have been reduced because there is an element of repetition if i just execute these set of instructions again and again again and again again and again we can achieve the same task you can replace it by the loop now there is only one piece of problem that exists here when is this going to stop man when is this going to stop like after 4 you go to 5 then print 5 then you go to 6 then print 6 7 print 7 and so on and so forth so on and so forth it is going to happen again and again again and again so it's not like i just branch my code like this we need to do something extra we need to do something extra we need to terminate the loop we need to terminate the loop now you might feel how will we terminate the loop in order to terminate the loop we need to make a decision about when to terminate the loop we need to make a decision about when to terminate and how do you take decisions how do you take decisions you take decisions using conditionals so you will say if num is less than or equal to 5 if num is less than or equal to 5 then you go here otherwise you go here if no then stop okay just think about it the value of num is 4 you printed 4 you incremented num plus equals to 1 num became 5 you go here you check is 5 less than or equal to 5 is is the value 5 less than or equal to 5 yes so you print the number 5 again and then you increment 5 to 6 then you go back here and you check is 6 less than or equal to 5 no so you stop the program so this condition is going to act as a terminating condition this condition is going to act as a terminating condition and this whole component is going to act as a loop so what is a loop whenever you have an element of repetition so you have these set of instruction which are executed again and again there is repeated so you can bind them inside a loop but for a loop to work you need a terminating condition that when this element of rep repetition should automatically stop so you can put a condition here if the condition is true then only you go inside the loop if the condition is false then you stop the loop as simple as that as simple as that is this point making sense everyone the basic thing that you need to understand is whenever we will see element of repetition we will just try to put a loop i'm going to tell you how you can write a loop in like exact programming terms but first of all you need to understand the nuance around why we have a loop why we have a structure of the loop in a certain way only so before starting the video i would like to tell you about algocam.io so if you are someone who is going to prepare for your upcoming coding interviews you are someone who already knows basic problem solving and basic data structures and algorithms and now you want to just kick start your journey or i would say level up your journey for your interviews in let's say next upcoming three to four months where your target is to solve as many good hard problems as possible that are going to be asked in the top companies then you can definitely go and check out the top coding interview problems course on algocam.io where we are going to solve more than 400 problems live as well as in hybrid recorded manner it's a completely power packed course where we have picked not only just the data structures and algorithmic topics but we have picked specific lectures where we are going to talk about specific techniques on every data structures and algorithm for example 
you can see there is dedicated lecture on problem solving on arrays then dedicated separate lectures on two pointers then you can see there is dedicated specific lecture on time and space complexity analysis and their problem solving and then there is a bunch of revision lectures because we know that recursion and backtracking still pains a lot of students so there are a bunch of revision lectures for that then we'll talk about maths we'll talk about modular exponentiation and matrix exponentiation because a lot of questions around these are asked in online coding tests and then we'll talk about problem solving around sorting basic sorting algorithms then dedicated problem solving around merge sort based problems and of course not just inversion count but major wide variety of problems around merge sort then quick sort and similar techniques around quick select algorithm binary search and you can see dedicated set of lectures around binary search binary search on answer mini max problems binary search on real numbers and what not then linked list you can see there are dedicated lectures on stacks there is dedicated lectures on queues binary search trees binary trees heaps hashing dp tries string algorithms and all the different variety of dp along with graphs dsus msts and what not and there will be a lot of mixed problem solving lectures that will happen this is definitely not a lecture or not a course where we are going to talk about any cake walk level problem or something everything that we are going to pick is going to be medium or lead code hard or the problems are going to be from code forces or code chefs right this is something that you can definitely try and check it out and you can use the code algo camp 500 to get a flat 500 rupees off on this particular course it's going to be something really power packed and something that you should definitely check it out so if you are someone who is preparing for their coding interviews do check out this course and you can check out more things around algocamp.io so now let's just move back to our video now the question that should come to your mind is how to create a loop like this in programming like exactly in c++ or any language that you are actually exactly working with how do you put a loop like this how can you implement something like this so let me just paste this flow chart here let me just play paste this flow chart here and then i'll explain so there are different ways in which you can implement a loop in c++ java most of the language there are different ways one of the way is using a while loop so what does while say while say that till the time a particular condition is true execute something so how do you put a while loop the syntax of while loop is something like you write the while keyword then inside a pair of parentheses you put a condition this condition should evaluate to a boolean value and then you put a pair of curly braces a pair of curly braces is going to create a block what is a block block is a collection of statements if you have a collection of statement you can bind them inside a block so wherever you see a pair of curly braces they actually form a block like that particular piece of code is called as a block it's like a theoretical concept so we create a block and inside this block we are going to write some statements now whatever are the statements they will be executed again and again and again and again till the time this condition is false so this block of while will be executed again and again till the time condition is true till the time condition is true okay so how can we write it what is the condition here the condition for printing the numbers let's say is we want to print the first five natural numbers for example so we will say something like while num is less than or equal to 5 while num is less than or equal to 5 what do you do you will say see out num let's say a new line also and then you do num plus equals to 1 okay So if you see the various components if you see the various component this is the while keyword this is the condition this is the block the whole block right and inside the block there is this particular instruction there is this particular instruction right so instruction that can change condition just think about it just think about it if i don't put this 
if I don't put this statement here and just say if num is less than or equal to 5 print num think about it if you don't have it here num starts with 1 is 1 less than or equal to 5 yes so you print 1 and you directly go here is 1 less than or equal to 5 yes you print 1 again you directly go here is 1 less than or equal to 5 yes you print 1 again so you are printing 1 again and again again and again again and again and this is not going to stop anywhere why because in order for this condition to be false the variables involved in the condition need to get changed over time so somewhere in the execution of the block there should be a statement that can lead to a change in the condition that is every time when this statement is executed number changes somehow number changes somehow so there should be some instruction that can possibly terminate the condition so this is like the terminating instruction terminating instruction that can help us to terminate the loop and that's it that's it this is how you write your basic while loop so if i write it in front front of you let me prepare the basic boilerplate okay so what is the first step the first step is I will initialize num. Done. Initialize num. Then, if I am writing if here, but technically, because it's a looping branch, so instead of just saying if num, we are going to say while num less than or equal to five why while is better and why while is for a loop because if instead of while if i put a if this condition will be checked only once its body will be executed or block will be executed and then you'll exit the if check but while loop is not like this i'll show you how while loop works okay so you can say while num is less than or equal to 5 you print num And then you do num plus equals to one. That's it. If you run this piece of code, you can see one, two, three, four, five is automatically getting printed. Now, what is going on here? What is going on here is something that we need to decipher. So let me transfer this piece of code to my iPad, and actually I can show you what is exactly going on. So let's say this this is the piece of code that you have what happens line by line in the first line you are going to create a bucket with the label as number and value as one okay then you say while num is less than or equal to five while num is less than or equal to five that means you will check this condition is one less than or equal to five yes that means this condition became true if the condition became true you are going to start the execution inside the while block so what is the first line to be executed print num so you printed one what is the next line num plus equals to one that means you are going to increment num to two and because we are in a loop the moment the last line of the loop will be executed from here you are going to come back to this condition again so from here you are going to come back here and you are going to check the condition again is it 2 less than or equal to 5? Yes. So what do you do? You print 2 and then you increment the value of num by 1. So num became 3. And then from here you are not going to go outside. Like this statement is not going to get executed. From here you will go back to the condition check only. So you will keep on looping in the same block. When the block ends you go back to the same block. When the block ends you go back to the same block. At the start. And you check again is 3 less than or equal to 5 yes so you print 3 and you increment 3 to 4 then you go back is 4 less than or equal to 5 yes so you print 4 and you increment 4 to 5 and then is 5 less than or equal to 5 yes so you print 5 also and then you do num plus equals to 1 so 5 incremented to 6 and now and now is 6 less than or equal to 5 
6 is not less than or equal to 5 that means this while loop is now done so what will happen is you are going to directly come to the next line outside the while loop so the next line outside the while loop is return 0 so it is going to exit the program so the moment the condition becomes false if the condition is true you will again execute the same piece of code again execute the same piece of code again execute the same piece of code the moment the condition becomes false at that point of time you are going to just break the while loop right so if i write something like this okay let's see what happens so you can actually debug code in vs code in the later set of classes i'm going to tell you how you can debug code debugging means the same thing that i'm doing on a pen and a paper you can directly do in vs code i'll tell you later in the classes but for the timing let me show you how it happens so i'll click a breakpoint here and then I click on start debugging. You might not be able to understand how I'm doing it, but uh, don't worry, I'm going to explain you later during the course. Okay. One second, it's loading. Okay, it's here. So now you can see we have a variable num. Can you see we have a variable num? We initialized it here, right? Num equals to one. And we are on line number eight. We are on line number eight. See, we are on line number eight. See this pointer. This yellow pointer is going to tell us on which line we are at. We'll check. What is the value of num? Num is 1. Is 1 less than or equal to 5? So we'll go to the new line. And yes, 1 is less than or equal to 5. So you go inside the while loop. You print num. You print num. So see, 1 got printed here. 1 got printed here. And then you are going to increment num. See, num became 2 is 2 less than or equal to 5 so you come back see after incrementing 2 you came back to while loop see this pointer it came back to line number 8 is 2 less than or equal to 5 yes so you are going to print 2 see 2 got printed and now you are going to increment 1 and meanwhile you can see line number 12 is still waiting line number 12 is not getting executed so after you have incremented see this num became 3 and you are back to line number 8 where you are doing the condition is 3 less than or equal to 5 yes you print 3 so you can see 3 got printed and you increment 3 to 4 is 4 less than equal to 5 yes you print 4 you go to 5 is 5 less than equal to 5 yes you print 5 and now num became 6 num became 6 so is 6 less than 5 is this value num 6 is less than 5 less than or equal to 5 no the moment this condition says no that means this condition is false the moment this condition is false, the moment I say next line, you can see it didn't go inside the while loop. It is not executing the block of while loop and instead it went to the next executable line after while loop. Let us see out end. You can see end got printed and that's it. This is the end of your program and this is the whole output. As simple as that. So this is the theory. This is the theory of loops. That whenever you have to repeat a task, you are going to bind that task inside a loop. That loop is going to execute that task again and again based on a condition. Till the time that condition is true, it is going to again and again execute that task. Right. That's the simple demonstration about a while loop. Now, folks, just think about it. If let's say I will change the value here from 5 to 15. Now, what will happen? You are going to start with 1. You will compare is 1 less than or equal to 15 print 1, move to 2, 1 plus 1 becomes 2. Then you will check is 2 less than or equal to 15, then you will check, check 3 less than or equal to 15, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you will go up to 15, 15 less than or equal to 15, yes. Then you go to 16, is 16 less than or equal to 15, no. And then you go for end. That means if you will just change the value, the condition will change and hence the output should also change. Right? So you can see here, everything is working like this from 1 to 50. Now let's say if I ask you to print everything in decreasing order. Okay. If I paste the whole piece of code and let's say if I remove all of this thing. If I ask you to print everything in decreasing order from let's say 10 to 1 in decreasing order that is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So maybe what you can do, you can start with the 10, right? You can start with the 10, okay? Then from 10, you need to go to 10 minus 1, 9, right? So what will you do? You will say C out num 
and from 10 you need to go to 9 how do you go to 9 you will say num minus equals to 1 can i say that now because you have written num and then num minus equals to 1 now you need to repeat this process you need to repeat this process while num is greater than or equal to 1 right you will repeat this process till this time and that's it just print end can i say that so the element of repetition was printing the number and decreasing it so from 10 you will print 10 and you go to 9 then again you print 9 and decrease it to 8 then again you print 8 decrease it to 7 and so on so if you run it so see we are able to loop the uh, you, we are able to iterate over the loop in decreasing order now can i say that so based on problem to problem we can even change it based on problem to problem we will be able to change it we will be able to do a lot of things for example for example i give you one question that return the sum of first eight natural numbers first eight natural numbers so what you can do simply is let's say you have a sum variable what will you do you will plus first of all add one to it then you will add two to it then you will add three to it and so on and so forth can i say that so what is the element of repetition here the element of repetition is you are every time adding a number to sum every time adding a number to sum at that and that number is increasing by one so every time we add a number to sum and next time that number increases by one can you see this number increases by one one to two two to three and whatever is the new updated value of the number you add it to the sum so maybe you can try to bind it inside a loop we say that int sum equals to zero then we say int num equals to one and then you say while num is less than or equal to eight that is you don't reach eight maybe you can do sum plus equals to num so initially the value of num is one so you will add one to the sum and then you do num plus equals to one then you increment num to two so initially num was one and sum was zero so you see is one less than or equal to eight yes it is so add one to the sum so sum became one and then increment num num became two and then you go back to the loop so you'll bind it inside a block and then you say you go back to the loop and you see is two less than or equal to eight yes it is if two is less than or equal to eight what will you do you will add two to the sum sum is one if you add two it will become three two plus one is three and the next line is number plus equals to one so two plus one became three and now is three less than or equal to eight is three less than or equal to eight yes three is less than or equal to eight that means you will add three to the sum what is three plus three it is already having a value three and now you add three so three plus three is six it became six and then num plus equals to one this became four okay you go back here is four less than or equal to eight yes so you add four to the sum so six plus four sum is six six plus four is ten it becomes ten and num plus equal to one it becomes five and so on and so forth this is how you can keep on adding the numbers right adding numbers using loop so if i write a basic boilerplate you can say that int sum equals to 0 int num equals to 1 okay let's say while num is less than or equal to let's say 10 
we want the sum of the first 10 natural numbers so it says sum plus equals to num num plus equals to 1 and then just print sum okay if you run it see you got 55 and the sum of the first 10 natural numbers is 55 as simple as that so the moment you see an element of repetition all you have to do is you have to bind it inside a loop to bind it inside a loop all you have to do is just use the while keyword you have to just use the while keyword you put a condition so till the time condition is true it executes it again and again then whatever statements you have you should add it and there should be one statement that can change the condition of the loop so if i put a debug pointer here i'll show you how the flow of code is executing so you have a variable sum and num so is num less than equal to 10 is 1 less than equal to 10 yes you add it to the sum so sum became 1 num became 2 then sum became 3 num became 3 then sum plus equals to num so what is 3 plus equal to 3 6 so you assign it as value 6 num plus 1 became 4 is 4 less than equal to 10 yes so what is 6 plus equal to 4 10 and so on see 15 then again right and finally you will be having 55 so this is how the flow of control is actually going to operate till the time you are in while loop remaining all the statements are going to wait you are going to keep on executing the while loop again and again and again and when it is done when the condition becomes false it is going to exit itself out of the loop so I hope the basic concept of how exactly while loop works is clear to everyone. Okay, so to complete our understanding around loops, we can solve a few more problems and uh, we can get the idea around it. So this is a new problem that is given in front of you. Let me explain the problem first of all in a sophisticated manner. You are given a number n and you need to find the sum of all odd numbers lying in the range 1 to n that means you will be given input of a number n for example n is equals to 8 right and you need to sum up every odd number odd number means which is not divisible by 2 which is not divisible by 2 so you have to sum up all the odd numbers lying in the range 1 to n right so you can say that if let's say n is equals to 8 is given then between 1 to 8 how many odd numbers are there there is one itself 3 5 7 and if you sum them up you get 16 right so you need to find the sum of all the odd numbers lying in the range 1 to n now just think about it now just think about it if let's say i just want to normally start solving the problem what will I do? If I don't have the essence of loops or if I don't have the tool of loops, this might be a normal flow of your program, right? Let me show you. Start, then let's say you initialize a number num. You initialize num, let's say, with 1, and then every time check. And not only num, you also take the input of n, right? So, one second. So, you have to take the input of n also. So, mm -hmm. n you give as input from the user, and you initialize a new value num as 1. Okay, you have two values. Then, every time you check that whether num is less than or equal to n or not if num is less than or equal to n then you sum them up right then you sum them up so now you can say that we need one more variable so let me restart let me restart we need a few more variables so let me make a bigger input box here so first of all we need a sum variable that will actually get the sum we need a number variable that is going to actually start from 1, then move to 2, then move to 3, then move to 4. 
and n is the given user input value n is the user given input value right and then we are going to take a decision that if num is less than or equal to n if the current value of num is less than or equal to n so for example let's say user give the value of n as 5 okay so is 1 is 1 less than or equal to 5 yes it is less than or equal to 5 so what do you do you move below with two condition yes or no right this will be set a, say a yes this will be a no okay if it says a yes then you sum it up so you do a processing so what do you do you say sum plus equal to let me write it like this you can write sum plus equal to num whatever is what was your number current number you add it to the sum and then you do number plus plus and then you do number plus plus that is you increment the number and then you check again and then you check again you check again that if number is less than or equal to n so now because you have incremented the number the number variable which was starting with 1 the value is now 2 can i say that now you will check is 2 less than or equal to 5 is 2 less than or equal to 5 there can be two conditions yes or a no so let's say i write a no here i write a yes here and then let's have a processing box where i can say sum plus equal to num and then number plus plus right and so on and so on so now you can see that we are repeating that whether the number is less than or equal to n this check we are repeatedly doing can i say that and then we are adding the number variable to some variable and then incrementing the number we are repeating this can i say this whole block is technically getting repeated more than once right it will be repeated n times can i say that this block then this block then few more blocks like these so there is an essence of repetition there is an element of repetition what is the element of repetition that every time you have to check whether the number m number num is less than or equal to n or not if it is then add it to the sum and increment the number so how about instead of repeatedly writing a check that is eventually going to be impossible if let's say n is of the degree 10 to the power 5 how about we try to repeat the process so we say from here just redirect yourself to here let's bind this essence of repetition inside a loop so now if you see now if you see when it stops i'm going to print some and then let's say stop it okay so now if you see if i restart if i restart number starts with one number variable starts with one and the sum variable starts with zero okay you check is one less than or equal to five yes it is so you go here you add num to the sum so sum becomes one and then you increment num so num becomes two then you go back from here to here to check is the num less than or equal to 5 is 2 less than or equal to 5 yes it is so you add 2 to the sum so 2 plus 1 becomes what 2 plus 1 becomes 3 and then you increment num num becomes 3 also and you check again is 3 less than or equal to 5 is 3 less than or equal to 5 yes it is so what do you do you add 3 to the sum 3 plus 3 becomes 6 and then you increment number num becomes 4 and then you check is 4 less than or equal to 5 yes it is so if 4 is less than or equal to 5 you bring it here and let's say you bring this also here if 4 is less than or equal to 5 you add 4 to the sum so 6 plus 4 becomes 10 and then you increment 4 to 5 and then you go back and check is 5 less than or equal to 5 yes it is 
So you add 5 to the sum. So the sum becomes 15 and then you increment the number. It becomes 6. Now you check again. Is 6 less than or equal to 5? Is, is 6 less than or equal to 5? You can see 6 is not less than or equal to 5. So you try to print the sum. You try to print the sum. Okay. And the sum comes as 15. Now, this is the element of repetition in the problem. But the problem was demanding one more thing. The problem was demanding one more thing. What was the problem demanding? It says that you have to just sum up all the odd numbers. Currently, we are just going from 1 to n and summing up all the numbers. We are summing up all the numbers. Right? How can we sum up all the odd numbers? Can I say that? this summation that we are doing if i can separately bind it inside a separate conditional then maybe we can just very easily do it right so if i just break down my algorithm like this if i break down my algorithm like this that you check If num is odd, you have to check whether num is odd or not. If it is odd, then you add it to the sum. Sum plus equals to num. Right. It will be either a yes or a no condition. If let's say it is if let's say it is odd, then you add it to the sum. If it is not odd, then you don't add it to the sum. But in both the cases, but in both the cases, you have to increment num. So you say num plus plus. So you can say, if this condition doesn't satisfy, then you are going to directly do it. See, if the number is odd, then you add it to the sum. Then you increment the number. Now the number becomes even. So it, is it odd? No. So you directly increment the number. And then, and then just attach it to your loop. Can I say that? And then you can repeat the process. So this, there was already an element of repetition. In that element of repetition, I just added a if check. I just added a if check. Now if you see, now if you see, we won't be adding all of the numbers. We will be just adding the odd numbers. So you can say number starts with 1, sum starts with 0. Is 1 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You check. Is 1 an odd number? Yes, it is. So you add 1 to the sum. So 1 to the sum. And then you increment num plus plus. Num becomes 2. Then you go back. Is 2 less than or equal to n? Yes, it is. Is 2 an odd number? No. So you just increment 2. So it becomes 3. Is 3 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. Is 3 an odd number? Yes, it is. You add 3 to the sum. Sum is already 1. 1 plus 3 becomes 4. And then you increment num plus plus. So 3 becomes 4. Then you go back. Is 4 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. Is 4 an odd number? No. So you just increment 4 to 5. And then you check. Is 5 less than or equal to n? Yes, it is. Because n is also 5. Is 5 an odd number? Yes, it is. You add 5 to the sum. So 4 plus 5 becomes 9. And then you increment 5 to 6. So this num becomes 6. And then you go back. Is 6 less than or equal to 5? No. You print the sum and then you stop the program. As simple as that. Right. So if I try to code it, if I try to code this whole solution, sum of odd numbers right i'll just prepare my boilerplate okay cool and then what i can do is we'll say int n will take a user input for n Okay, and then we'll have a variable sum equals to 0 and we'll be having a variable num equals to 1. 
we'll say while while num is less than or equal to n sum plus equal to num num plus plus but there is one more condition that you have to only do the sum if num mod 2 is not equal to 0 then only you should do the sum and that's it that's it you can now just print the sum you can now just print the sum and do a return 0 right so whatever i just wrote see num less than equal to n inside the loop is going to be a while loop then inside that there is only a single conditional in every time because you can see i have not binded it in a loop inside a loop uh, or binded it with a loop I instead it is inside a loop right so now if you run it it's expecting a user input let's say i give it 8 so you can see the answer is coming as 16 right and that was the expected answer so this is how you can sum the odd numbers starting from 1 to n using a simple while loop so we discussed about while loops right we discussed about while loops similar to while loops we have one more type of loop technically like in programming languages there are there are many different type of loops while loops we have already learned one more type of loop is called as for loops now for loop is almost nothing like inside a while loop this is a basic structure of a while loop right you initialize a variable outside the while loop you have a condition right you have a condition then you have some implementation and then at last you have a condition that or you have a statement you have a statement that is having the possibility to change the condition this statement is related to the same variable which on which actually the condition is happening right this is while loop now for loop is nothing for loop is nothing but something like this so you write a for loop as for for is the keyword that you are going to use here inside the parenthesis what you will do you will just initialize a variable after initializing a variable you will put a semicolon second you are going to check the condition then you put a semicolon third you are going to write your statement using which you can actually change the condition the condition is possible to change if i just attach these three components in these three positions and just write a for it's a for loop that's it now you need to just write the implementation inside you don't need to write this statement inside and the best part is this 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 any of this is not mandatory any of this is not mandatory for example you can initialize this variable int i outside also and you can just keep this part empty and just put a semicolon you don't need to even write anything here similar to this similar to this like any part you can keep empty you don't need to write it you can do it outside the for loop or inside the for loop for example i plus equals to one can happen inside the for loop also so if you want to do it inside just don't do it here right the only thing that we write like we use for loop is for all the majority details about how the for loop is working actually get resembles directly in the first line only otherwise there is no any specific benefit of using a for loop or a while loop everything that can that a while loop can do a for loop can also do right so if i just quickly show you a demonstration okay so we'll say for or let's say first of all let me write a while loop int i equals to 1 while i is less than or equal to 10 i plus plus and then you do c out i okay now if i want to do the same thing with the for loop we'll say for 
you can just cut this or copy paste this condition from here then you copy this condition from here and every time after every statement you have to put a semicolon and then this semicolon is not mandatory for the last statement right you can just avoid it otherwise it will show an error c out i and that's it if i will run the both the loops if i will run both the loops you can see the output is same the while loop is also printing the numbers from 1 to 10 and the for loop is also printing numbers from 1 to 10 so just a syntactical sugar you can say that you have just rearranged the major elements of the while loop and formed a for loop out of it now i know the syntax might look a bit overwhelming in the start but that's why we are going to solve a bunch of problems up ahead using which we will be able to get more familiar with the syntax of while and for loop syntactical sugar we don't have to like get worried about it's always in your initial days try to solve more problems automatically the syntax will uh, you will get the hang of the syntax having said that having said that now we are going to start a set of problems called as pattern problems we are going to start with pattern problems what are pattern problems in pattern problems you will be given let's say some value of n and you won't be defined like a good amount of logic or something you will be given some output that is expected on the screen based on the input for example let's start with a pattern like this 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 Okay, let's say if n is equals to 5 is given, then on the screen you want to print something like this, right? Let me give you one more example. Let's say for n is equals to 3, you are going to get 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. This is what you are going to get on the screen, okay? So in pattern based problems, you are just generally given like some input of n, it can be uh, dependent, very uh, like pattern to pattern. And you won't be explained a lot about the question. All you will be given is what is expected on the screen. It's kind of like a puzzle. You have to figure out everything yourself, right? If n is equals to 3, you have to do something like this. Although it's very intuitive, these problems are very intuitive. But again, as I said, you don't get much information. Now, how to solve the pattern problems? Now, one very interesting fact about pattern problem is if you look at most of the patterns, just by looking at the pattern you can say that you can sense a element of repetition can you see at least in this pattern every row is same you are going to do the same thing for every row can i say that and not just the rows but even if you take a look at the column you are technically doing the same thing in the column by just incrementing the number initially you are printing one and incrementing print two incrementing print the current number increment print the current number increment print the current number increment and then end so there is a sense of repetition there is an element of repetition there and whenever we have an element of repetition loops are very helpful right loops are extremely helpful for us now how can we solve this question now generally in pattern problems you can just formulate a few things you can derive a formula for a few things and the problem should be solved we'll solve like ample amount of pattern problems and we'll get the hang of it okay so you can see this is row number one this is row number two this is row number three this is row number four this is row number five okay let's try to write some observations if the value of n is five you are printing five rows so how many total rows are expected to be printed can i say n whatever is the value of n that many number of rows you want to print can you see n was 3 so you just printed 3 rows can i say that so whatever is the value of n that many number of rows you want to print that is for sure see n was 5 so you print 1 2, 3, 4, 5. You are printing 5 rows. Can I say that? Then we ask a question that how many 
columns we print in each row now in each row how many columns we are printing you can see 1 2 3 4 5 can i say n columns we are printing so this will also get an answer as n for sure right so we can say that we have to do some tasks for n rows and we have to do for every row we have to do some tasks for n columns right what i'm saying is we have to do some task repeatedly for n rows see every row is exactly doing the same thing right not even a slight change is there exactly you have to do the same thing so you have to repeat a process for every row so how many times you are going to repeat that process n times and then you have to repeat a process for every column how how many times you are going to repeat it n times so if this observation is clear to everyone let's try to solve the question for any one row so let's solve for any one row let's solve for any one row why we are trying to solve for any one row because i can write a loop like this for int row equals to 1 row less than or equal to n row plus plus can i say that if i create a variable named row and iterate it from 1 to n then whatever we are going to write here inside the for loop will be repeated n times content of this for loop will be repeated n times right and that's what we have to do right we have to repeat something for n rows we have to repeat something for n rows so we will try to write some logic inside the for loop so that we can execute it for a particular row right now what you have to do for a particular row what you have to do for a particular row in a particular row we have to just do a simple thing we have to print n numbers from 1 to n you have to print n numbers from 1 to n so if i give you a question that print n numbers from 1 to n both inclusive space separated that is between every number there should be a space so how can you do it how can you do it you can just simply say oh this is a simple question to solve right if i want to print numbers print n numbers how about if i take a variable and num is equals to 1 and every time or we can just do it inside also for int num is equals to 1 num less than or equal to n num plus plus see out num and then you can see out a text which is just a space right so see what is happening here you wanted to print n numbers because in every row you have to just repeat this process so in every row you have to print n numbers from 1 to n so you start your loop from 1 you start a variable from 1 and you go up till n see initially the value of num will be equal to 1 you will check is 1 less than equal to n yes so you print 1 and a space and then you increment num so let me even show you let's say num is equals to 1 n is equals to 3 you start with 1 is 1 less than or equal to 3 yes it is so you first complete this you won't increment immediately you first print c out so c out 1 and a space okay and then you increment num once all the body of the for loop is done then you increment the num so num becomes 2 is 2 less than or equal to 3 yes it is so you first go inside complete the task so you print 2 and a space and then to number plus plus that is 3 is 3 less than or equal to n that is 3 only yes so you print 3 and if there is a space followed by 3 we don't even need that because this is going to be the last iteration we print it and increment num to 4 and check the condition again is 4 less than or equal to 3 no the moment 4 is not less than or equal to 3 this for loop will break and we will get 1 2 3 so can i say that i can just repeat this process i'll just copy paste it 
I'll just repeat this process copy paste inside this outer for loop so this is the outer loop this is the inner loop right so outer for loop represents that you have to do some task n times why you have to do some task n times because technically we are repeating some task for n rows so we need repetition n times every time you are going to just print numbers from 1 to n space separated once you have printed all the numbers you can print a new line you can print a new line so that next iteration can print things on the new line and that's it that's it right so you are going to repeat this process the internal process n times that is for each row you will try to print n numbers space separated this type of a looping mechanism is called as nested loops nested loops means one loop is embedded inside another loop one loop is embedded inside another loop right so let me do a bit of dry run let me do a bit of dry run for you let's say this is your screen okay now you go here you initialize a variable row so row equals to 1 and let's say n is equals to 3 okay is 1 less than or equal to 3 is the value of row less than or equal to 3 yes so you go inside the for loop inside the for loop you initialize num and then you check is the value of num less than or equal to 3 yes you print num num is 1 then you print a space and then you go back and increment num so num becomes 2 you check is 2 less than or equal to 3 yes you print 2 and a space and then num plus plus and then you check is 3 less than or equal to 3 yes so you print 3 and a space last ending space won't matter you go back you increment num to 4 and now is 4 less than or equal to 3 no so this for loop breaks you are going to go to the new line c out n that means you are going to come to the new line every next uh, i would say output is going to come up in the new line so can i say the outer for loop body is done outer for loop body is having no statement so it will go back and increment the row count we were already doing task for the first row now we will do the same task for the second row once row becomes 2 we execute this for loop again so num starts with 1 is 1 less than equal to 3 yes it is so you print 1 then a space and increment 1 is 2 less than equal to 3 yes 2 space and then 3 is 3 less than equal to 3 yes you got a 3 and then you got a 4 is 4 less than equal to a 3 no this for loop ends and then you are going to go to the new line due to this and then come back to this for loop where you do row plus plus so row becomes 3 and then again you come inside this for loop it's going to do the same thing 1 space 2 space 3 and then move to the new line so this is how you can repeat the process right and if i just directly code it if i just directly code it so let's say So we'll say int n user will give the input of n user input okay n is going to represent rows so we need to do some task for every row what task do we need to do row equals to 1 row less than or equal to n row plus plus and inside this loop we'll say write the logic to repeat for every row now you say for in num equals to 1 num less than or equal to n num plus plus and then you say c out num 
and after that you just print a new line that's it that's it if you run it see exactly same code i have written the same code that i wrote here if you run it it says one error is there let's see what is the error okay i guess let's restart it okay cool uh, now let's give some input let's say four and you see you are getting the output as this one two three four one two three four one two three four then you give five you are getting that also you're giving eight then also you're getting the whole pattern right and and this is how you can actually implement it this is how actually you can implement it this is going to give you the good essence of how exactly loops works how exactly pattern problem works because now we are having a loop inside a loop this is generally a more complex logic in the initial days of programming to think of that's why we are going to solve ample amount of pattern problems to understand loops completely sometimes we'll also use while loop inside a loop or something like that so that while loop is also revised every time so i hope the overall logic of the first pattern is clear to everyone So we have been discussing loops for quite some times, but uh, just like conditionals, I showed you some good applications of conditionals, right? That if let's say you are having different subscription in an app, then how can you actually follow them? Now, what can be a real life use case of loops? Let's try to see that. Let's try to see that. So I believe everyone must have watched some web series on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hotstar, or some other streaming platforms, right? Every web series got some episodes. So let me take an example of one of the most famous Stranger Things. Okay. This is Stranger Things. The same, I guess. Okay. So these are the some screenshots from the Netflix app. For the Stranger Things show. Okay. Now, if you carefully see that in Str Stranger Things season 4, we were total having 9 episodes. So, we actually on the screen see 9 different tiles. Actually, this is scrollable. So, I'm just scrolling it here, but I cannot take like a scrollable uh, screenshot. So, I just took multiple screenshots. So, you can see every time you have a new chapter window or something like new episode window or a new episode tile if you carefully see every tile is kind of like same the piece of information is similar in every tile you have a episode number you see in every tile you have an episode number you have name of the episode you have some thumbnail of the episode you have a download button for the episode you have the run time for the episode and then you have a description of the episode see same thing repeated number name download button thumbnail runtime and a description number name download button thumbnail description and every time same thing happens every time same thing happens it's just that the data is changing but the element of repetition is that for one episode you need to show a thumbnail Episode number, name of the episode, download button and a description. The only thing is we might be storing data about every different episode separately. What we can do? We can store all of that data somewhere or collect that data from somewhere and store it somewhere. And then just by applying a loop, repeat the process of displaying the data, right? How this data is accumulated that we might discuss later, but the sense of repetition you might get that by just applying a set of loops, you can do the same thing. You can print all the de details of all the episodes of Stranger Things and not just Stranger Things, any web series on Netflix. So loops are used for these kind of situations where you have to repeatedly, repeatedly do something on the screen and you are thinking how you can do it. This is how you can do it, right? So these are some like one of the good applications of loop that I was think uh, that I was able to think about. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, right? We discussed some of the basic uh, parts of C++. Um, if you like the video or if you have any doubts, do drop your comments. It really motivates us to keep ourselves consistent, right? We are going to put uh, the next lecture most probably day after tomorrow. 
uh so stay tuned for that do share with all of your friends that we are actually launching this kind of a series right and if you are someone who is regularly following this then don't forget to tag us on your twitter tweets or maybe on your linkedin post you can tag uh, us with something like uh, hashtag sanket explains or maybe dsa with sanket anything like that it will definitely help us to reach out to more people and it will help us to understand that how consistently you guys are following the series we are going to bring up more awesome content around C++ and trust me, we are going to unveil a lot of secrets around data structures and algorithms, web development, mobile development, and with uh, C++ and other corresponding tech as well. That being said, let's just wrap this particular video here. We are going to meet very, very, very soon in the next set of lectures. Till then, take care guys. Bye-bye. I'm Sanket Singh, signing off.